In Nanyang Spectrum, Chingay 2012 takes us on a colorful celebration of love in all its guises. And Muse, we have a full-time guitar maestro come part-time lady killer. The Singapore Zoo transforms itself into a race course for the Zoo Run 2012. Hi, I'm Teoman. And I'm Cynthia. Welcome to another episode of Nanyang Spectrum. So Cynthia, how have you been enjoying Singapore so far? I've been enjoying it a lot. I've been discovering some of the great culture and activities here in the city. How about you? Absolutely. I went to Chingay Parade 2012. What an amazing event. Let's check it out. Fire, water, song, and dance. Chingay Parade 2012 was held at the F1 pit building and attracted over 150,000 on-site visitors. What began as a Chinese celebration of deities has now become a multiracial festival during the Chinese New Year period. Chingay was organized by the People's Association, aimed at building an inclusive, caring and vibrant community. Oh, it's very wonderful to have Chingay Parade showcasing all the rich culture uh, of our society in Singapore. This year's parade boasted off a record-setting 360-meter long waterway. Over 8,000 local and international performers were involved in the event, making it the ideal platform for interaction and bonding. Uh, I have never before danced on the water, and in this time, in this experience, I think that is really a wonderful memory in my life. Many months were spent in preparation before the actual event. Performers had to rehearse repeatedly to make their acts a success. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we're doing. Uh, some of us are, are dancing, like us, we're dancing. There's another part where uh, the visuals, where, where they hold these lighted balls and they dance around. And uh, we also have uh, somebody singing. These performers came from a hundred different organizations. Together, they put on a dazzling show featuring dragons, fairies, and sailboats. It was thus an honor that the students from NTU were singled out by the organizer for their contributions. I also want to thank the NTU because a lot of your students are also participating in Chingay. So well done, uh, fellow friends from NTU. Keep up the good work. The night ended with a rousing performance of Chingay 2012's theme song, Love Will Make You See. Visitors were also treated to a breathtaking display of fireworks and confetti. I'm always proud to be a Singaporean to watch this. This is the only place in the world that you can find a multicultural type of chingue. Nowhere else in the world, truly Singapore. It's been a great evening of color, culture and cheer here at Chingay 2012. I can't wait to come back again to the next parade. This is Theo Manchalik reporting for Nanyang Spectrum. Also at Chingay were 60 of our very own NTU students who were part of the People's Association Youth Movement contingent that kicked off the parade with a segment called Dynamic Youth Warrior. Grace Chu with the story. Don't be fooled by the simplicity of the dance. Behind the masks and costumes lie true warriors who have put in much hard work behind the scenes. Training started way back last September and continued over the holidays. All this in preparation for a dance, which focused on the different aspects of youth. The youth, like, as a warrior, how we brave out into the challenges or that. And the dragon warriors indeed faced many challenges along the way. They had to perform their entire sequence along a 400 meter stretch of ankle deep water, a first for the parade. It was a tribute to the year of the water dragon, which unfortunately saw its share of mishaps. I think the most serious case is the one, the, the girl who fainted because she, I think it was splashing water and some, she actually drank some water from the river. Yeah, so then there's an allergic reaction inside her, then she fainted. To guard against slipping, performers donned special footwear. However, the tight shoes caused blisters, cuts and bruises. The plaster will fall off mm. because it's water. It's water. Yeah. Wow. So you will come out, so you no choice, uh, just bleed and dance. <laughs> Apart from the watery challenges, float construction at the arena also caused one serious accident. Dancer Colin Lee, a year 4 physics student, 
stepped on a sharp metal object in the ground just five days before the show. I was walking quite fast and so I stepped on it and it went through my footwear and into my, in, through the sole of my foot. And before I knew it, I was on the way in the ambulance to a &E. While most students enjoyed an easy first two weeks of school, the NTU team had to juggle schoolwork, social life and training. It's true that we have to spend a lot of time because usually for one training, it will take from maybe the whole night or during weekend, it can take the whole day. So we have to sacrifice a lot of time for other stuff. So you will sacrifice sleep in order to make sure that you get your grades and uh, be able to help out so much in Chingye. Yet, despite all these challenges, those interviews still felt it was worth it. At least one performer has taken part in every Chingay in her four years at NTU. The fun of Chingay is not something that you can tell by words. It is by feel. Yeah, definitely. After you join, you'll find the feel. And then you'll feel like, ah, the feel makes me want to join again, again, again. For the performers, the electric atmosphere, excitement, and appreciative cheers from the audience makes their hard work pay off. As you can see, Chingay 2012 has ended. But one thing we know for sure, the NTU team has emerged as true warriors tonight. This is Grace Chu reporting for Nanyang Spectrum. Hey Cynthia, do you like to go running? Uh, I hope you're not trying to ask me out. But if you must know, I do not like running. It's not really my thing. It's very repetitive and boring. Well, then you might like to know that there's actually an event that allows you to run and look at animals at the same time. Are you serious? When is it? Oh, I'm sorry, you missed out on it. But our reporter Andre was there to catch the action. Animals, enthusiasm and lots of energy. The Safari Zoo Run was held on 5th February at the Singapore Zoo. The run offered thousands of participants the opportunity to run alongside dozens of animals at the Singapore Zoo. It's an annual event that began in 2009 and has gained popularity ever since, especially among families. This is the fourth year that they are doing this run and uh, I hope the participants will enjoy themselves, enjoy the sights and sounds of the zoo, enjoy nature and remember arming at the same time. The race compromised of three different routes. 2.8km route was designed especially for children. Most participants took part in the 6km Safari Zoo Fun Run, which was open to all age groups. Competitive runners, however, opted for the 12km Safari Zoo Challenge. The hot weather did not stop children of all ages from taking part in the race. Not only did they encourage healthy living, it was also a good opportunity for them to learn more about animals. I'm happy I did it. How is it like running to the zoo? Um, fun. Fun? You get to see animals? How is it like running around animals? Um, cool. The run was organised to commemorate the death anniversary of Arming. Singapore's tourism icon. Part of the event's proceed will also go to the care of endangered animals in the zoo and safari. I think uh, the most important or, or the objective of this event is uh, to promote healthy lifestyle, uh, family bonding and also create awareness for participants to take care of the wildlife animals and also have a chance to run in a nice safari in the day. The winners of the kids categories 2XU's fastest boy and fastest girl were as young as six. Attractive prizes were given out to reward them for their hard work. Uh, we're, we're incredibly oh, yeah. great. I feel great! It's awesome. Hi, I'm on TV. Be sure to sign up next year. This is Andre Ha reporting for Nanyang Spectrum. Do you know that the shark population is decreasing because they are killed for shark fin soup? That is so cruel. Yes, I know. But personally, I am a shark fin soup lover. But to stop the shark cruelty, I have stopped consuming it a long time ago and found an alternative to satisfy my craving. Really? That's great. What's, what's the alternative? 
did you know it's like right here on campus? Our reporters have the story. Let's take a look. Located in the heart of NTU, the Zangati Cafe is a hidden gem. This restaurant has been operating since 2009 and has attracted many customers because of its tasty food and good service. Shark's fin soup is one of their special dishes. This is a bowl of shark fin soup dish, but they are not made up from real shark fin. So, what are the ingredients inside? Let's find out! There is carrot, cucumber, tomato, mushrooms, white cabbage and glass noodles, also known as tanghun. These ingredients are firstly sliced. White cabbage is used because after it is boiled and thinly sliced, it looks like real shark's fin. The other ingredients are then used to make the soup, so there's no food wastage. The chef told Spectrum that this vegetarian shark's fin dish was created to cater to customers who are vegetarians or health conscious. But the dish is also popular with their regular customers because of the authentic taste. So, I think the taste is quite good. So, as for how it differs from the shark fin taste, actually I don't really can differentiate. As in, I don't really, my tongue is not so good, so I cannot really differentiate shark fin and this. Uh. As for killing of sharks, mm, I'm not really, uh, I do eat seafood myself. So as long as um, it's sustainable, and as long as um, they're not endangered, then I'm okay with, uh, with eating shark products. So, if you're craving for some shark fin soup, but do not want to contribute to the slaughter of sharks, Drop by SLT Cafe for another whole new experience. This is Singing reporting for Spectrum.